Thank you, Charlotte Lefevre, for playing How Great Our Joy, Angels from the Realm of Glory, and What Child Is This? I am Chaplain Ann Weaver. Here we are, three days before Christmas, and I find myself pondering, what child is this? When he was born and... Who is he to us now? I reminisce about Christmas celebrations from the past, children's pageants, candle lighting services on Christmas Eve, my father playing the pump organ on Christmas morning to wake us up, wearing pajamas all day long, sipping eggnog, and visiting with relatives in Johnstown and Illinois. It is a gift of aging that we have these memories to treasure. While there is always something new to learn about the Christmas story, I am grateful for these five plus decades of memories that substantiate my faith and my understanding of God's Son coming to dwell among us. And this time of year, we ponder what is ahead for us. How many more Christmas seasons will we enjoy? How will our families change in the coming years? Slowing ourselves down to ponder is a gift that we can give to ourselves in the midst of any busyness we might be feeling. Listen to Luke 2, 16 to 20, as an example of pondering. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about the child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had said to them. But Mary treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which just as they had been told. Mary had nine months to ponder the birth of the Messiah. She asked questions like, how can this be? Who am I to be the mother of my Lord? And pondering perhaps helped her to say, May this be according to your will. At the birth of Christ, she pondered the experience of the shepherds who heard the multitude of angels sing. As Jesus grew into a man, no doubt Mary continued to ponder, how can this be? Who is Jesus? And with a breaking heart, perhaps she whispered, thy will be done as he hung on a cross. I believe that pondering is a form of prayer. Let me say that again. Pondering is a form of prayer. Asking questions about God or to God is a sign of engagement, commitment, and openness to ongoing learning. As a child, Jesus pondered the teachings of the religious leaders in the temple Later, Jesus pondered his own calling when he went out into the wilderness. 
Jesus intensely pondered in the garden of Gethsemane as he faced betrayal and execution. Pondering draws us closer to God. This year, several experiences have helped me to ponder the meaning of Christmas and awakened my desire to the depths of scriptures. Working with Mennonite Children's Choir of Lancaster to produce a Christmas Day special for us has been so inspirational. Listening to the children memorize the Christmas passages has melted my heart. Hearing them sing familiar carols and carols from around the world has blessed my spirit. I'm so grateful for the next generation to ponder and treasure these scriptures and hymns. I know that you will be blessed on Christmas morning by their pre-recorded program that will air on WLH and in West Bethany Chapel at 10 a.m. I hope and pray that you can ponder the mystery and the beauty of the Christmas story. I also want to share an experience with art that has deepened my connection to the Christmas story this year. On Monday, the pastoral services team spent a few hours at First Presbyterian Church of Lancaster on a mini retreat. We took time to ponder the icon paintings by Dorothy Thane that are on loan to First Presbyterian Church. We also pondered the beauty and meaning of the stained glass windows in the sanctuary. One painting in particular drew me in. Mary held baby Jesus. Skin touched skin, eyes locked onto eyes. As I pondered the power of this painting, I prayed for this same kind of connection between myself and the risen Jesus. Can I slow down enough to treasure Jesus? Can I calm my spirit enough to feel the peace of Christ? Can I humble myself enough to carry Jesus with me into my everyday life. I was amazed by how much a painting evoked a faith experience for me. Lastly, I want to introduce you to a new painting that hangs on the wall in West Bethany Chapel. And I welcome you to come to the chapel and ponder what this painting might say to you. It was painted by a young man from Mozambique named Placido, who lived in Lancaster last year and attended Laurel Street Mennonite Church. Elizabeth Soto invited him to paint a picture that demonstrates the love that Jesus has for older adults. Now this piece is abstract and might take a bit of time for you to feel and sense the meaning. But what I see is the risen Christ stretching out his arms and holding an older adult. The painting suggests to me that many more are waiting for an embrace from the Messiah. As I pondered this painting that hangs in our chapel, I remembered the painting of Mary 
holding the infant Jesus that hangs in First Presbyterian Church. When Jesus was a baby, he was held and loved. As a risen Savior, he now holds and loves. Over the next few days, you may have opportunities to hold and love. And you might feel intense sadness because there is someone whom you cannot hold and love. Ponder these things. Pray about these things. And know that Jesus is listening holding you and loving you. Let us pray. God, we thank you for scriptures that we can ponder, that we can soak in, that we can allow to shape us. And we thank you for music that gives us a sense of your holiness, of your beauty, and that touches our spirits in a way that nothing else does. And we thank you for art that gives us insight, that wakens our spirits, and today we especially thank you for paintings of Mary holding the infant Jesus, the treasure of their love. And for this painting by Placido, showing Jesus treasuring us. May we treasure Jesus and one another. In your name we pray, amen.